Good afternoon. It will be good afternoon by the time you get it Saturday, but we are pre-recording now at uh, about 7.30 uh, on a Thursday evening because it's got to uh, go to the funeral home and be put into the funeral service. So we're doing this tonight, thanks to Joanna, weathered the storm to come out to uh, record it for us. So, uh, Bonnie asked me uh, Tuesday evening about five o'clock, she was talking to uh, Gladys and, and I was in the room with Gladys and I uh, shared a verse of scripture with her from uh, Revelation chapter 14. And then she asked me if there's any way that I could uh, speak at uh, David's funeral and so we got with uh, Karen and with Joanna, and so uh, they worked it out where we can pre-record it and play it at the funeral. So uh, this is what the Lord has given me to give uh, you all regarding our brother and friend, Brother David Hutchins. He was a special man. I loved the man. Uh, I want to give you a little bit of background on Brother David and I. I got to know David, not just at church, but through the years we rode together and worked together at the Bible camp and building ramps and working at people's homes and eating together after church and and talking to him uh, between services at church. So I got to know him real well. Uh, he would share with me the treatments he was having, how he was feeling, and where he was with his treatments. So, he was always very positive and upbeat, uh, even though he was going through these kinds of treatments. And so there are four or five places here in the scriptures I want to share with you because as I thought, as the Lord brought these scriptures to my mind, it reminded me of uh, Brother David. So I want to share these with you tonight. Second Timothy 4, 6 through 8 would be the first one. This is Paul uh, uh, writing to young Timothy. But it reminds me of Brother David. He says, For I am now ready to be offered. Now, Paul offered his life uh, to Christ through the years that he lived, and he also offered his life to the Lord in death. And that's exactly what Brother David has done as well. He says, And the time of my departure is at hand. Now, David has realized this for a long time. He knew that uh, there was going to be a time out there in the near future that he was going to pass. And so he says, I have fought a good fight. And Brother David done that. He fought the fight of faith. He says, I'll finish my course. That is the road of life. You know, Brother David, just like all of us who are born again, we will take off that broad road that leads to destruction. And we will put on that narrow uh, path that leads to heaven. Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father but by me. So Brother David finished his course. He says, I've kept the faith. Uh, henceforth, that is from this time forward, there is laid up for me a crown of righteous, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. That would be Romans 14, 10, at the judgment seat of Christ. If you're saved, if you're born again, you will receive rewards for what you've done uh, from the heart and the heart of love at the judgment seat of Christ. Uh, but, on, uh, but unto all them also that love his appearing. David shared with me many times uh, whether he went through the grave or whether he went through the rapture, he was going to win. I can tell you that man has won. He's in the very presence of a holy God, the one that he loved, the one he served, the one he lived for, the one that he dedicated his heart and his life to. He lived, this man lived a holy life. Galatians 5, 22 through 25, I think the Lord brought this to my mind as well. He said, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, uh, he was a loving man. He loved people. Joy is a condition of the heart. Happiness is a state of mind that can change at any time. And Brother David had this joy. 
and peace. He had peace in his heart to live or to die. And so he made peace with God and then he had the peace of God as a result of that. Long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, Against us, there is no law. I'd love to develop that a little further, but I don't have time. I've got to move on. It says, and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh, that is, put the old, uh, old uh, flesh to death with the affections and the lust. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. That is by the power of the Holy Spirit that lives within. If you walk with God, if you have the power of the Holy Spirit on your life, I can tell you, you'll see how the Lord works in your life. I can tell you, Joanna was just sharing with me a few minutes ago how the Lord worked through the day for her to get her to where she is here right now recording for me. I want to share with you Revelation 16, 15 too. He says, Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments. Now, the context in which this is given is given to the tribulation saints. It's not given to the church and the saints of God in the church age or the age of grace. But we can apply that as well to our own lives. He says, Behold, I come as a thief. Blesses he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, that is clean, through the spirit, the soul, the body, living a holy life. Brother David Hutchins lived a holy life. And Lest he walk naked, that is, in sin, and they see his shame. I'm going to tell you, there's a lot of Christians going to stand before the Lord one day, and we're going to be standing there with them, and they're going to be ashamed of their life that they lived as Christians after they were saved. Philippians 4, 15 through 17, I want to share that with you too, and the reason why you'll sit in the last three or four words here in this verse, these verses, he says, now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. For even unto Thessalonica ye sent once and again unto my necessity. Brother David did that with God's men. Not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that it may abound to your account. You can rest assured everything you've done for the Lord or whatever you've done for people from the heart, a heart of love, compassion, and caring, for it will be laid to your account one day. I've got to go to, uh, into the Old Testament for one verse of Scripture, uh, and you'll see what I mean in a moment. Lamentations 3, 6 to 4, he says, Render to them a recompense. Now, a recompense means to compensate or to repay. O oh Lord, according to the work of their hands. Now, the Lord brought that to my mind because those precious hands of Brother David Hutchins, all the work he'd done uh, for people working. He loved to work. He enjoyed working. He enjoyed sweating and working. And so he set a good example for all of us in that. Revelation 14, 12 through 14, and I'll close with this. He says, here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. Brother David Hutchins he was in Christ. He had been saved. He had been born again. And he died in the Lord. Uh, from It says, and from henceforth, that is from this time forward, yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors. My brother has been laid to rest, whether he's in a casket or whether he's in an urn or whether they spread his ashes. That's uh, between him and the family. He doesn't make preparations for that. But his labors is over in this body of flesh, and their works do follow them. I want, to, I want you to think about that too for a moment. Not only that everything he done in this life follow him, but your influence will follow you as well. I can tell you that influence of that man and the memories I have of him will follow me to the grave. And I'm sure it will with you as a family and the close friends 
especially them two boys, them twin boys. Uh, that he said a good example for them. I tell you, boys, you could never have a better dad than this man as your dad. And I know you are following his footsteps. And I looked and behold a white cloud and upon the clouds one sat like unto the son of man, having on his head a golden crown and in his hand a sharp sickle, which is, a, is a representing the judgment that's going to come on this earth one day. If you're not saved, if you're not born again, God says, all in sin come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. That the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I have got to close with that because you need to repent of your sins, call upon the name of the Lord, uh, turn from your old wicked way and turn to the Lord and be saved and be born again and join my brother David and all those who have gone to heaven one day when you die or when the rapture happens. Uh, so I want to close with these words. We all would do well to emulate the life of this man because Christ lived in him, in him and through him. And you would all do well if you would emulate the life of my brother David Hutchins. I want to pray now just a short prayer. Our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for giving me the opportunity and the honor to say a few words on my, about my brother that is uh, in your presence right now. And I pray, Father, in Jesus' name for uh, Sister Bonnie, Lord, that you'd be with her and comfort her. I pray, Father, in Jesus' name, she'll feel your presence in the absence of Brother David. I pray, Father, that you bless the family. I pray, Father, that you bless every friend that has come to this funeral uh, uh, Saturday. And I pray, Father, your blessings upon us all, Lord, that we would see Jesus in all that we do. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.